DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to this week's program. Coming up, Asia Pacific and Central Asia solar to exceed 3 gigawatt by 2017. SMA Solar's market shares, sales, margins and workforce fall in 2012. And SunPower lifts lid on new record 21.5% efficient X-Series solar modules. PV capacity in the emerging Asia Pacific and Central Asia region is forecast to exceed 3 gigawatt by 2017, according to a new report from market analysts at NPD SolarBuzz. With only 723 megawatts of PV demand in 2012, a strong compound annual growth rate of 28% is predicted. The report acknowledges that the Southeast Asia region is now widely recognized as a leading hub for upstream manufacturing. PV Tech's parent company, Solar Media, will be hosting a conference in the region at the end of the year. One of the most popular stories of the last week has surrounded the increasingly competitive marketplace that continues to erode SMA Solar Technologies once dominant position in the PV inverter market. Despite the continued global growth in PV installations, SMA Solar's market share has plummeted from over 40% in 2010 to only 25% in 2012. Based on 2013 guidance of sales of between 900 million euros and 1.3 billion euros, further market share losses are expected. The company made inverter shipments of 7.6 gigawatts in 2011, but this dropped to 7.2 gigawatts in 2012. Significant pricing pressure also impacted revenue in 2012. The company reported 2012 sales of 1.5 billion euros, a 13% decline compared to sales of 1.7 billion euros in 2011. As part of efforts to slow the rate of margin decline and profitability, SMA Solar said that it reduced its headcount by 500 in the fall of 2012. The company reiterated in its annual report its continued focus on new product introductions as its main strategy to remain competitive. The company said that it expected to spend approximately 120 million euros on R&D activities this year, a figure significantly higher than its rivals. The shockwaves from the bankruptcy of Suntec Wusi continue to reverberate. Reports have cited that at least five stock-listed suppliers to the company have declared provisions for bad debt from the collapse subsidiary of Suntech Power Holdings. The reports claim that total debts from the five suppliers amounted to 68.7 million US dollars. The largest debt was said to be held by monocrystalline wafer supplier Changjing Zongwan Semiconductor, which is said to be owed approximately 28.3 million US dollars. The reports claim that total debts from the five suppliers amounted to 68.7 million US dollars. The largest debt was said to be held by monocrystalline wafer supplier Chaojing Zonghuan Semiconductor, which is said to be owed approximately 28.3 million US dollars. In related news, the China Banking Regulatory Commission has warned Chinese banks that the country's PV industry represents a credit risk, according to reports. The result is that previously agreed credit approval rights have been withdrawn, notably for industry sectors that have outdated production equipment as well as suffering from overcapacity. The Bank of China had already downgraded the status of its loan to Suntech, while the chairman of China Development Bank was cited in reports to have said that the bank would reduce new loans specifically to PV module manufacturers in the country. The tightening credit environment could force further consolidation as well as limit expansions, which will also support a return to supply and demand balance later in the year. US solar behemoth First Solar has acquired a 150 megawatt solar project called Solar Gen 2 near El Centro in Imperial County, California. The purchase is from Energy Power Partners, an affiliate of the Goldman Sachs Group and a third equity partner for the project. 
The acquisition includes 40 megawatts of PV modules, which have already been purchased from another supplier, which will be integrated into the installation that is due to begin construction later this year near El Centro. The utility scale project is slated to complete in 2014 and adds to First Solar's project pipeline, the biggest in the industry. SunPower has made its new record performance modules available in the US this week and across Europe in May. The newly dubbed X-Series modules come with SunPower's latest Maxian Gen 3 solar cell technology, which has conversion efficiencies of over 24%. The X-Series modules use a new copper-based interconnect between the backside of the wafer and the back sheet, which reduces resistance and improves conductivity to minimise overall module efficiency losses. The company said that the all-black aesthetic appearance of the modules meant that the target market was specifically residential. A 250-watt small-format module has been designed to enable small roof optimization, and a 345-watt standard-size module will also be available. SunPower previously held the record high performance module with its E-Series range, which used its Gen 2 solar cells to enable module efficiencies above 20%. The E-Series was first launched in June 2011 at InterSolar Europe. And finally, we end this week's newscast literally on a high as the world's first solar-powered plane will begin its attempt at a coast-to-coast -coast crossing of the United States in May, powered by cells from none other than SunPower. Solar Impulse is capable of flying 24 hours, but after takeoff from San Francisco in early May, it will stop in four US cities – Phoenix, Arizona, Dallas-Fort Worth in Texas and Washington DC – before landing at New York's JFK Airport in early July. The experimental solar-powered plane has a wingspan of a jumbo jet and the weight of a small car and its trip across the US is its last mission before attempting a zero-fuel round-the-world flight in 2015. Well, that's it from us. Stay up to date with all the latest solar industry news via our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching and see you next time.